Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for over 50s, we are going to be putting the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation to the test on more mature, less than perfect skin. I'm 59 years old. I have my fair share of wrinkles, enlarged pores, discolorations, and I like a foundation that makes my skin look better and younger than it actually is. And so that's what I'm hoping to get out of this foundation today. I put it to a multi-day 10 hour wear test on each day. I try it with different sunscreens, primers, setting spray, setting powders, put it through the test, show it to you in bright light, regular window light, here in the studio light, up close, in your face. So if you like a thorough foundation review, go ahead and give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So let's get into the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This retails for $49 for one ounce and it comes in 36 shades. This was kind of a roller coaster ride, so I hope you stick with the, the review till the end because if you just watch day one, you'll get a completely different impression of it than, you know, after day two or after day three, which is today. It's supposed to be an advanced makeup skincare hybrid foundation with medium buildable coverage and a natural finish. NARS also says that it instantly blurs imperfections, smooths the look of textured skin, and helps conceal blemishes, dark spots, and redness. It's for all skin types. They say it helps maintain skin's moisture, and it's also acne friendly. The packaging is a recyclable glass bottle with a pump dispenser. And I gotta say the pumps that this pumps are tiny, tiny little pumps. So I think they want you to use less than more. The formula is vegan. It contains no SD alcohol, no fragrance, and it's also paraben free. The shade that I picked it up in is Patagonia. Today's the third day that I'm wearing this foundation. I've worn it two days previously. We'll go back in time to day one to see how it worked on the first day. The first day that I try a foundation, I always try it with no helpers, no primer, no setting spray to see how it works just on its own. I do always wear sunscreen under my foundation. This foundation doesn't contain sunscreen, but even if your foundation does contain sunscreen, you generally don't put on enough foundation to get the SPF on the label. And I don't like to rely on makeup for my sunscreen, so I always wear sunscreen underneath, but that's why I try it with a few different sunscreens in case the sunscreen affected the wear of the foundation. So on day one, I used my Holy Grail sunscreen combo for testing makeup. I used my Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44 mixed with Paula's Choice Super Light Sunscreen. The pumps are tiny, so I put two pumps out on the back of my hand. The foundation is a fairly lightweight liquid. It is a little bit stiff. I used a dampened Beauty Blender sponge on one side of my face. I I use the full two pumps to do the first side of my face. I gotta say the shade match is really, really good. It's the first time I've ever gotten a good shade match in an NARS foundation, so that's awesome. It goes on really well with a sponge, and I gotta say, just looking at the first side of my face, I was wowed by how beautiful it looked. It looks so skin-like. It's really, really beautiful, and look at the shade match. I have never been able to get a shade match in an NARS foundation. I used two pumps for that side of my face and I feel like I need just the tiniest bit more right up here on my forehead. It goes on beautifully with a sponge. Let's try the brush on the other side. I'm going to be using the BK Beauty 101. With the brush, this foundation goes on a little bit heavier and looks a little bit more makeup-y. So I went ahead and pounced over the brush side with the sponge, and that helped to sheer it out a little bit so that it looked really, really nice. First impression, I think this is very, very beautiful foundation. I don't feel like it looks heavy or mask-like. I feel like it's very natural looking and skin-like, especially on the sponge side. I feel like the finish is really nice. It is, of course, a light reflecting finish, so it's a little bit shinier than I would like, so I would like to powder the T-zone. Maybe we'll try it on one side of my face with setting powder and the other side without. How does that sound? You can see like my pores and texture aren't accentuated and that's awesome. All right, here's the NARS with the rest of my makeup on. I put setting powder on this half of my face 
which is the Honest Beauty setting powder. And I feel like at least to start with the setting powder, it does make it go like very matte. So if you like a velvety matte finish, then setting powder is going to give you that. It also makes it look a little bit more makeup-y, a little bit more dry. If you have dry skin, you probably won't like setting it. You probably prefer this side. I use the Glossier Cloud Paint for the blush and it played really well with the cream product. I also used Char Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for my highlighter, another cream product. Didn't remove the foundation. As far as how the makeup looks, it has settled in my wrinkles already and the time it took me to put on my makeup, it's settled in my smile lines over here and also this crease over here. And on my forehead, you know, I have like Botox in my forehead, so I don't have a ton of movement up there, but even these like little minuscule wrinkles up here, uh, it has settled into those as well. It's not doing anything too terrible with my crow's feet as of yet, but I didn't really put any up there per se. Um, but other than that, I think it looks good. I think those are things that people would only see from a super up close view of me. So from a distance, it probably looks fine. You're probably like, what are you talking about? But anyway, as always, let me show it to you up close and personal. So um, just to show you the difference between the side with the setting powder and the side with no setting powder, I feel like this side definitely gives me the more natural skin-like look. With the setting powder, I feel like it doesn't look as skin-like and natural as it did when I first put it on. And I feel like it's made it look a little bit dry and almost a little bit cakey in through here. And you can see where it's settled in my wrinkle, right there. And, but it has settled on the side as well. And then up here on my forehead, I don't know if you can see where it's settled in there. Sometimes these things are just too little for my camera to focus on. So that's what it looks like in the studio lights. Let's take it outside and see what it looks like in the bright sunshine. I thought it looked really, really nice in the sun, especially the side with the setting powder. On that side, I could hardly see my pores at all. But look at that one side, they're barely visible. Right here's Sonara's foundation in natural window light. And it looked pretty nice on most of my face, but I did notice that all the wrinkles on my chin were being accentuated in this light. And I'm not sure what caused that, but anyway, that's the way it was. I went into a closet to take the flash picture to see if it gives flashback, and oh my goodness, this gives a ton of flashback. I came back to the camera for the five hour check-in, and by five hours, I wasn't really loving it anymore. The side that I didn't powder, which is this side, has gotten increasingly shiny. The powdered side is actually reasonable, and I feel like this foundation has just found and settled into every wrinkle on my face, every bit of texture, like every pore, every little micro wrinkle. So it looks okay from a distance. I gotta say the wear isn't terrible, but it's not great either. It's getting really patchy up here in my forehead and wearing off on my nose already. My upper lip looks sweaty yet wrinkly at the same time really pretty. And then up here, I've got this weird little like flaky business going on, flaking up some of my other products. It doesn't feel drying per se. It does feel a little bit dry right around here, but other than that, it doesn't feel hugely drying, but it's just very like mottled and bad looking up here on my forehead. My nose just looks terrible the way it's wearing off on my nose. So I'm really kind of hating it. Um, if I could wash my face right now, I would, but I'll see you back here in five hours. At the 10 hour check-in, it was just a disaster. It had worn off in patches on my nose, chin, forehead, and cheeks. So my whole face looked really mottled and I looked a little oily on the non-powdered side, but it also kicked up skin flakes and was drying around my hairline. It had gathered by the sides of my nose and was flaky there too. So while it looked oily, it was also kicking up skin flakes and looking dry at the same time. It was lifted and separated on my forehead and overall it looked terrible. It's a good thing that I try everything for a few days because I had completely different results the second time I wore it. So don't judge it solely on day one. It could have been the sunscreen I used with it. It just didn't love it. So anyway, day two, I decided to use a different sunscreen. I used my Dr. Jart Every Sunday SPF 50, which is a lighter weight mineral sunscreen with a more matte finish. I added Hourglass Veil Primer all over my face to help it wear longer. I applied it with a NYX Marshmallow Sponge. By the way, this sponge is so cute and so fun and I just love it. Anyway, I use that on one side of my face and I use the BK 101 brush 
on the other. The foundation played well with the primer and went on well with the sponge, but it was kind of a repeat of the previous day where it didn't go on as well with the brush. I think it's because this foundation is a little bit stiff and it dries quickly. The brush application was a little streaky and a little mottled, so I pounced over the brush side with the sponge. I added a little more foundation on my nose and chin to build it up, and you are able to build it up. It does give a solid medium coverage, and you can build it up to full coverage. I love how it looked again today. It's very smoothing on my pores. It gives nice even coverage with a satin matte finish, but it settled into my smile lines again right away. I added IT Cosmetics Setting Powder and Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray to help it really last throughout the day. All right, here is the NARS foundation with the rest of my makeup on. I think it looks really nice. I'm in love with it again right now. We'll see how it wears. I did add primer, setting powder, and setting spray, but it settled into my smile lines again right away. This is the five hour check-in on the NARS foundation. I gotta say it's wearing way better today with this sunscreen and the primer and the setting spray and the setting powder than it did the previous time that I wore it. I think it still looks really good. It's really in place. It's not moving around. It doesn't feel drying. Um, and I think it still looks really skin-like and it's not getting like super shiny. It looks in place. It's not really settled in like my wrinkles. Like yesterday, it was really caking in these wrinkles badly. Not so much anymore. I had that really weird area over here. Don't have that today. I mean, it had settled in this wrinkle at first, but I just kind of brushed it out of there and it hasn't gone back in there. It feels comfortable, so I am much happier with it today than yesterday. At the 10 hour check-in, I thought it still looked really, really nice and I was really happy with the wear and the performance. There were still a few spots where it was getting a little thin, like on my chin and near my eyebrows, but overall it looked in place. So that brings us up to today, which is the third day that I'm wearing it. Today I wanted to try it with an all chemical sunscreen instead of all mineral sunscreens like I had used the previous two days. So I used my Isntree Watery Essence SPF 50. I didn't use primer today. I applied it with my fingers today, which is what they instruct you to do on the NARS website. I gotta say it didn't go on fantastically with the fingers. I didn't love the application. I tried to apply it as sheer as I could today. I used two pumps and tried to get that to cover my whole face. And using my fingers, it definitely went on a little weird. It skips over in large pores. It's very streaky. It's very mottled. I had trouble getting it to cover on my nose. So in the end, I ended up going back to a sponge and just pouncing over it with the sponge. And I added maybe another half a pump. But I did uh, powder my T-Zone with my NYX Matte Mineral Setting Powder. I'm not going to apply any setting spray today because I want to see if it was really the primer and the setting spray that made it last the 10 hours on Tuesday or if it can last 10 hours on its own just depending on what sunscreen you have on under it. So today's coverage is just two and a half pumps. So you can get good coverage out of it, you know, just using kind of the bare minimum. Cause like I said, those pumps are tiny, but I think it's giving me really nice coverage today. I think it looks really pretty today. It is settling a little bit in my wrinkles today. These guys and these guys up here, kind of the same as day one, but not as thickly settled. It's just like the tiniest little hairline of foundation settled in there. I don't feel like it looks the most natural and skin-like today. I feel like it does look a little bit like makeup sitting on the surface of my skin. It is giving me more of a matte velvety finish today with the NYX Mineral Matte Powder that I used. I really love this powder. It's a new one I discovered. I will go ahead and wear it all day. I'll do a five hour and a 10 hour check-in. We'll see if we can get another 10 hours of wear on it. So I'll be back to check in with you in five hours. Hey you guys, I'm back. It is time for the five hour check-in. And today I think it's looking really, really good. So it's wearing much, much better today than it did on the first day. Today it's actually wearing as well as it did on day two when I added a primer and a setting spray. Um, so it may not have needed all that stuff. I don't know, maybe it was just that it didn't like that sunscreen that I wore on the first day. It's barely worn off at all, like on my nose. It's still so really in place. It's not getting super shiny. It has gotten a little bit shinier through here, but I have to say um, the sunscreen that I used with it today has a really luminous finish and that you know doesn't seem to be coming through a lot. Um, I like the setting powder I used with it today better than the 
Honest Beauty, which made it go a little bit too heavy and velvety, although it did make my pores completely disappear. This one, you know, my pores are still a little bit more visible, but this is still smoothing on the pores. Not accentuating wrinkles, pores, or texture. Um, looking nice and skin-like, so all in all, this is so far a good day at five hours. I'll be back in another five hours to give you my final thoughts on it. All right, hey you guys, I am back. It's time for the 10-hour check-in on the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Did it make it to 10 hours today without primer or setting spray? Mm, almost, <laughs> almost. Uh, it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look great close up either. Uh, I'd say from this distance, it looks like it's pretty much still in place. So, you know, it's just a little, the slightest bit worn off here, which isn't bad for 10 hours, but I feel like it just doesn't look that great. Like, I feel like it's really shiny and making me look a little oily through here, a little, like, gathered up in here. Um, I feel like it just looks a little patchy here and there, and on my forehead, it's definitely patchy here, and then up here, there are, like, some funny little chunkers taken out of it where I guess I bumped it with my nails and now it's under my fingernails. So anyway, I'm um, just not loving it. It just feels a little bit dry. I don't know. I just can't get 100% behind this one. This one is a mystery, you know, wrapped in an enigma, <laughs> surrounded by a conundrum. It just is such a funky one. So let's run down the pros and cons on it. Gotta put my glasses on so I can see them. On the pro side are that it looks so beautiful when you first put it on your skin. Like if you just put it on in the morning and never look at it again for the rest of the day, you could be perfectly happy with it. Or if you're only wearing it for say, three to five hours, you'd be really happy with it, as long as you put the right sunscreen on under it. It is actually pore smoothing, which is something that every foundation promises, none deliver on. This one actually delivers on it, especially if you put a setting powder on over it. This foundation with the Honest Beauty Blurring Setting Powder, oh my God, what a combo for making your pores disappear. Even in the bright sunlight, the foundation does have a very pretty satin matte finish. I think if you like more of a velvety look to your skin, then you'll like this. It's not gonna give you that super dewy, super glowy look. It does offer medium buildable coverage. I felt like the coverage was really good. Wear time, I have it on the pros. I did get two pretty good days out of it, one really good day out of it, but the first day, not good at all. So, you know, again, roller coaster on that. Uh, it does play well with others. I found that putting powder makeup on top of it and cream makeup on top of it. It performed very nicely under cream, blush, and bronzer, which some foundations don't, so that was good about it. On the con side is that it does settle in your wrinkles, so as much as it makes your pores look diminished, it makes your wrinkles look worse. <laughs> so kind of a balancing act there, depending on what your problem is, pores or wrinkles. It gets shiny without setting powder. Um, you know, it definitely makes me feel a little like oily looking by the end of the day. It can be finicky about sunscreen and about application. It worked fine with two of my sunscreens, did not work at all with my Holy Grail sunscreen. The application, it worked great with a sponge. It did not go on well with a brush or with my fingers. You may have different experience from me, but that was my experience with it. The last con is how it photographed with the uh, flash. It gave a lot of flashbacks. I feel like it's kind of worth a try. It depends very much on what kind of foundation you like. If you like something that, again, has more of a satin matte finish, is going to be blurring and uh, disguise your pores, you could love it. Um, if you like something that's really glowy and dewy and youthful and natural looking, I wouldn't say it's that. It doesn't look super makeup-y, but it doesn't look super like skin-like natural either. So you could go either way on it. I guess <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence on it. Again, not the best I've tried, not the worst I've tried. The best one that I've tried lately, of course, is the number one to Chanel. This is so beautiful, at least on my skin, but you know, $70. I mean, this is only $49, only $49. Uh, this is more the price point that this should be, but this is gorgeous, lasts all day, not finicky, don't have to mess around with it with other things. So that is it for the Foundation Friday for today. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, go ahead and give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.